Hello everyone and welcome to part two of the April seed sowing video for 2023. I thought I'd give, we're going to start here in the greenhouse at home and I'm going to go down the plot and I'll show you why. This is my heated propagator bench. Most of you will know that in the kitchen I have a Super 7 propagator where I get bulk seeds going in a little small pot in a control way where I can keep an eye on them. And then I come out here with them, pot them on into trays, and then maybe pot them on again. And then eventually they go onto this side, like these lovely, these are lobelias, these are bedding plants, and I've got petunias here and parsley. These have all been potted on. Now the situation I've got now is all these need to be cleared. I'm going to take all these down in the allotment and my seed potatoes, because they're going in this week as well. And then I've got plants over here, tajits or tajitis, and marigolds they can then move on they can come over onto this bench and then i can pop them on and eventually they'll go down to the allotment so it's a bit of a circle of life but it's never it's a never ending circle because it ends up in the plot it doesn't come all the way back to me well i suppose it does come all the way back to my kitchen when i eat it but in here for instance i've got my tomatoes aubergines sweet peppers um I've got some chilies down the other end there. These eventually will need bigger pots and they will take up more and more space in here because until they, like the tomatoes for instance, until they touch the top of this, when this cover is over completely, they will stay in here, stay on the heat, keep going and keep potting them on until they're too big and then I'll take them down to the allotments. So I've got a decreasing amount of space. So utilizing the space properly or what I call properly, is to get the plants moving once they've germinated and started growing on, get them on here, get them potted on and get them moved off. So we're gonna take this lot down to the allotments and I'm gonna sow some more seeds. So with these few things brought down, I've now got space at home, carry on with the repotting. So let's get on with the sowing then and the first one is something I said I wasn't going to do, which was multi-sowing my beetroots. And just after the new year, my partner said to me, are you going to be doing those small beetroot again on your plot? They were nice through the summer with the salads. <laughs> so best way I can achieve that without disrupting. I see I've, I've already sown some lines of... Uh, beetroot out there some little rows and i want them to mature to big size because i want to make pickles and chutneys and things out of them and roast roast them whole to go with you know roast dinners and things it's just so nice like that so we're back to multi-sowing but i'm only going to do the one tray this should give us ample and sort of putting three or four maybe even five seeds in each one and then as they become of a size to eat, we just pick them carefully so that you don't disrupt, disrupt the rest. Pick them, twist them out, the rest carry on growing. But there should be enough here to see us through that salad craze time of the midsummer. So there we go. There's one I said I wasn't going to do, and I now am. <laughs> Next up here is, I got this from um, Grown Local up in Edinburgh. Ian up there has been very kind and sent me these seeds. And this is a new variety to me. And it's a, it's a summer harvesting broccoli called Sun King. Apparently it doesn't bolt too easily. So we'll just sow these on here and we'll see how they go and how they do. Just mix that up. Trying quite a new, a few new varieties this year, to be honest. New varieties right through the range of uh, seeds, all the way from tomatoes down to radish, really. Trying new varieties. So that's the Broccoli Sun King done. What we've got up next? Again, two new varieties here. Um, one again from Grown Local called Chef White. I don't really know much about this yet. I'll find out and let you know, and I'll write it in the write-up underneath the description. I'm assuming it's got a longer blanched part with it being Chef White. 
we're going to sow all of these. I've already got some leeks sown in various places. I've got some sown here in the ground in the polytunnel and I've got some sown in a tray in the greenhouse at home that I'm going to pot on. So that's that one, Chef's White. And another new variety to me, I've seen it, just never ever grown it. This one is called Elephant. And I pronounced the fant correctly because it is with an F. <laughs> so I've got mussel brush sewn at home and in the bed here. So this is a new variety and we'll try this alongside them. And I'll probably, yeah, I'll probably sew this whole packet. And we'll see what we get and see what they're like at the end of the season. Let's pop some compost on these. Again, this is all sieved compost as usual, so it makes the pricking out easier. And it makes the just makes the wetting of the seed coat easier as well. Because there's nice fine grains of compost around all around the seed coat for the time it takes very worth it so there we go leek elephant and leek chef white what's next we're getting on to some warmer weather crops now and two types of courgette again both from Ian a grown local and this is a courgette called pick and pick and it's an F1 and I'm only going to sow five of each of these basically I want two plants that's all we need of courgettes you all know once a courgette gets going it should feed you all summer long so the law of averages or as I call it the law of sod be a couple that don't germinate don't grow or die and I'll be left with two of each and I can give one away and keep one for myself that's the way I work things so that's the pick and pick up to there and this next one again courgette and this is another one I haven't tried before called butter stick f1 so a new one to try and, and see what it's like I normally only ever grow yellow courgettes. I don't think either of these are. So my partner ain't gonna to be too happy about that because she only likes the yellow courgettes, hence why I only grow them. But needs must, must try. Hopefully I convince her, can convince her that other colors are just as nice. <laughs> So these are in quite small cells and very quickly once they germinated they will need potting on. Um, these I'll take home and put on my propagating bench once those marigolds and tagetes have moved off. These will go in their place, get some warmth to start them off. Much the same as these next ones and these are, I must stress, trials. These are by no way, no means are my main crop. Two types of French bean, and I'm only growing 12 of each. What I want to try, and I've tried it with the war French beans and it's worked, uh, is to grow them early and late in the polytunnel, so under cover. Um, I know I've planted out uh, French beans here at the end of May. We've had a frost early June, killed them all dead. So that's what I'm dicing with if I plant them outside. You might be luckier, you might live in a warmer climate and you can get away with planting them early. I can't. <laughs> I've got to be careful. So I'm trying these. That one's Blue Lake. Just to see if I can grow them inside and split my harvest. And, and in uh, two or three weeks time, sometime in May, I'll sow my main crop which are the ones that will go outside 
So hopefully I should have a little harvest indoors here in the polytunnel. They'll finish, I can rip them out and get something else in the ground. And then I can plant something else. I can harvest the ones outside, sorry. So that one's Blue Lake and this one is Cobra. This is my favorite variety of the French bean. And again, I'm just grabbing hold of them so that it's flat between thumb and forefinger. So it goes in on edge and then just plant them sort of knuckle deep, really. Don't want to go in too deep. And I'll just cover these over with compost and let them get on with it. I'm not going to water these. I don't want them to get waterlogged. This compost is already moist. I've watered it this morning. And then we'll just try and see if they do well at all. If, you know, I can get them to a stage where I can plant them out and grow them up canes in one of my tunnels here. I've got the space, so I might as well try. And if it does work, I can refine it for future years and get more crops and then maybe try it at the end of the season, which might be a bit more perilous, but these things are always worth a try. There we go, that's that little lot done. <laughs> and I've got one last one here to go at. These are cucumbers. And again, two more varieties that I've never grown before. This one from Grown Local up in Edinburgh. And this one is called Merlin. And I'm going to be right stupid here. I'm going to sow all these seeds because there isn't that many of them. But at the end of the day, there's always people looking for cucumber plants. There isn't many in this packet. There's five. Again, on edge and planted knuckle deep. Didn't I write a label? How very slack of me. Right, we'll just put that one in there for now. And this one is a, a Chinese one called Slangen. Never heard of it, but it's, uh, I believe this one is a Chinese one. Did I read that right? Or originally Chan. Yeah, Chinese Slangen. And it's a long cucumber, not one of the short ones. But again, never tried it, so. If we get a lot germinate, I can always plant one or two outdoors and plant one or two in each polytunnel. So I'll just get these planted up and then I'll go and do some herbs. I'll do my peas actually next and then maybe do my herbs outside as well. I've got a few herbs to go in, not all of them. I'm not planting all of them today, just a few. There we go, I'll come back to you in a bit. So I've just got me, so I've just got me one's two peas to do now. I don't grow peas anymore, unless I'm persuaded to do so. These are one's two peas, so you eat all the shell and the pea inside. And this is a French one called Caroubi du de Moussin. I'm just going to spread these. This is a, just a bit of gutter and there's some drainage holes in the bottom just so it doesn't get too wet. I've half filled it with compost straight out of the bag and I've watered it and I'm just throwing these peas in and then I'll cover it with compost and eventually I'll find somewhere to hang it up down here just so that the mice can't get at these peas which they can be a bugger for. There we go, the whole packet. I think there was 350 seeds in there. So I'll just hang them on some loops, a bit like me hanging shelf is here from the roof on my polytunnel here. And that'll be it, sorted. So there we go. 
Now, I never got round to sowing the herbs today. I've got four down there, and there's at least another two at home I want to add. They'll go on to another video now. And sowing is now picking up. I've done a lot of what I can early, and I've got a lot of plants ready to go out, and there's still a lot more to come. So, best thing to do really is to subscribe. The button's just underneath this video, and then you won't miss any of my future sowing videos. All the potting on, all the planting, all the harvesting, and everything else that I do, the modifications I make to that new polytunnel, for instance. So, don't forget to subscribe. As I say, that's it for today. It's a lot sown, which I'm pleased about taking some home now. Do look after yourselves, everyone. Take care and I'll see you soon. Tarana.